You have all had lectures on first aid. I'm going to talk to you about psychological first aid. A man can become a casualty through damage to his emotions and feelings, just as much as if he were wounded. When a man joins the army, he faces a big emotional upheaval because he has to give up many of the comforts of civilian life. The ease and freedom of his home his own table, his children or kid brothers or sisters, his parents, his wife or his girlfriend, his freedom to go where he likes, when he likes, and to dress as he pleases. Instead, he has to wear a uniform like everyone else. He has to eat when he is served and learn to hold his own. He has to get used to living with a lot of other fellows. He has unpleasant fatigues to do. And tough physical drill. Come on, you guys, get the letter out of me. He has to get used to being ordered around. Keep your head nice for the front. He may have to leave his country to go overseas. He may have to take part in hard and bitter fighting. He may become a casualty. All of us have at some stage difficulty in adjusting ourselves to life in the army. From the time we leave private life until we see action, there are problems great and small that we have to face. In battle, fear is normal and everyone is afraid. The small difficulties and worries of getting used to the different method of living in the army are miniatures of the big worries, like the fear of death and injury in battle. In learning to overcome the small worries and fears, you are preparing yourself to handle the big ones, for they are one and the same thing. Fear is a protective mechanism. It's like blinking your eyes when something comes too close. You aren't a coward because you blink. It's automatic. And you aren't a coward when your heart beats fast when you go into battle. Fear is an automatic feeling that your body gets when it prepares itself to meet danger. It gets you poised for instant action. The fear feeling affects all parts of the body. Your heart beats faster and harder because it has to pump more blood to the places that need it for action. The brain which directs the action the liver which provides quick energy food, the big muscles which do the work. Less blood is available to those parts of the body which are in no immediate need of it, like the skin and the stomach, and so you feel cold and clammy. Your stomach temporarily stops its normal work and feels like lead. 
your whole body becomes tense and keyed up. As a result, your muscles may shiver and tremble. Now all these things have a purpose. They are the natural physical changes that help your body to prepare for danger. They're a blessing in disguise. Don't let them worry you, for this only adds to these changes, and you may get the idea there's something wrong with you physically. You've all felt much the same way before a football game. All animals show signs of it. These are automatic reactions of the body to prepare itself to meet danger. There is no cowardice in this. Fear is what you feel. Cowardice or bravery is how you act. But often you have to wait before going into action, even though your body is poised and ready for it. You have to wait until your craft hits the beach, until your platoon reaches the front line, until the barrage lifts. And during these periods of waiting, you begin to feel the unpleasant symptoms of fear. It is building up with no outlet. This is natural and does not mean that you are a coward. It really means that your body needs action. Action is your body's safety valve. If you can't get into fighting action at once, you must do something else. Check your weapons. Improve your position. Rehearse the action to come as it has been outlined to you. Whenever you can, sing or talk or crack jokes. Remember, your pal probably feels the same way you do. Help him over it. Confidence is contagious. If you remember this simple psychological first aid, you need have no worries about how you will act when the fighting begins. And your chances of getting through unhurt are correspondingly improved, which is important to the Army as well as to you. The Army doesn't want you to get killed, any more than it wants you to be disgruntled and ill. A dead soldier is a useless soldier, but so is an unhappy one. That's the other side of the picture. Men whose worries make them become casualties before they even see battle. Just take a seat over there. Hello, Joe. Hello, Steve. And all the time you're just nervous and jumping and your heart pounds something, something awful. I was sure I had a heart attack until the M.O. said no, but it still pounds pretty bad, but mostly it's, it's in my stomach. I, I got pains in my stomach, something awful, honest. I'm, I'm sick bad. Hey, Martin, let's see your tongue. You want to see me, sir? Yes, about Martin. You're his platoon commander, so I thought you ought to know about his case. What do you think about him? He claims he's in a pretty bad way, and he's certainly not much use to the platoon. Well, physically, he's A1, but emotionally, he's not. He's got something on his mind that's causing all these pains. I've seen him several times and have got most of the story. It all began about six weeks ago. He asked for a deferment and he didn't get it. 
There's a lot of trouble in his civilian life that he wanted to settle before coming into uniform. We might have arranged some leave for him if he talked it over with someone, but he didn't. So he developed a grudge against the whole army. Take it easy, Martin. Oh, don't fry your face. What's eating that guy? He thought everyone was against him. Come on and play, Sarapus. He can try to forget his resentment, but that doesn't work, because he can only push it to the back of his mind, where it keeps piling up until it makes him physically sick. The symptoms are the same as those of crude physical fear, only they've been going on for weeks. It's a sort of chronic fear reaction. Get your hands out of your pocket! He gets keyed up, tense, and nervous. His heart pounds, he develops pains in his stomach. Now he has a new worry in the form of definite physical symptoms. This makes him a sick man and a useless soldier. And it all started with a personal worry over a problem which could easily have been solved. Well, what do we do now? There are several things we can do to interest him in something other than himself. But first, he's got to talk things over with you as his officer, or his sergeant or corporal, or the padre or psychiatrist. He must be made to see that the real cause of his illness is worry, and not physical disease. I suppose some men feel backward about bringing their troubles to their officers. Well, so long as you realize that it's your responsibility as platoon commander to see that his troubles are solved. There's his corporal or his buddies. Put it up to them. It's their job, too. Teamwork isn't a thing you just use in battle. It has to work every day, so that when a man sees action, he will know that everyone will do his part. It's the ones who won't fit in who are the most likely to crack up in battle and so endanger the whole platoon. If you don't help them in time, it may be too late when you reach the front line. That sort of trouble can build up in a man's mind like a pile of blocks and it doesn't take much to topple them over. But a man doesn't break unless he's missed something that's been available to him all along. Cooperation and help from his team, advice and guidance from his leaders, and skill and confidence from his training. In your training, you develop toughness of body and toughness of mind, and absolute confidence in yourself. A man who has been through it knows that he'll never have to face harder conditions in actual warfare. He has confidence in his weapons, his leadership, and he knows that the army fights his enemy. But he has a job to do, and while doing it, he's protected by his team. He knows that all men feel fear in danger, that fear has nothing to do with cowardice that it makes the body powerful, that the symptoms vanish in action, that action is a safety valve under fire, that small worries and fears must not be allowed to build up and interfere with his job. to master his weapons. Now he has learned to master himself. He has reached that peak of power and confidence, which is the core of fighting morale.